Greetings to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. My name is Andrei Shetnikov, and in today's video, I will be focusing on the topic of the optics of concave and convex mirrors. And of course, I will start with an experiment that many physicists have conducted starting from Archimedes by directing a parabolic mirror towards the sun. I bring a piece of paper close to the mirror so that a bright spot of light appears on it. And it starts to smoke right away. The concentration of solar energy in this spot is extremely high. In our experiment, the fundamental property of a parabola and rotating paraboloids is utilized. A group of parallel rays falling on a parabolic mirror along its axis come together to form a single point after being reflected. This point is called the focus, which in Latin translates to the hearth. According to the legend, it is said that Archimedes used mirrors to concentrate sunlight and burn Roman ships while defending the city of Syracuse. And here you can witness a solar ray concentrator positioned in the country of Uzbekistan. The parabolic reflector is 54 meters tall and is made up of a total of 10,700 small flat mirrors. Sun rays are directed onto this massive mirror using a system of rotating heliostat mirrors and are concentrated at the focal point through a precise alignment of the mirrors. The temperature in this location reaches 3,500 degrees, enabling the melting of ceramics, the creation of new materials, and the testing of the outer shell of spacecraft. Additionally, it is evident that the direction of the rays can also be reversed. And grab a light bulb, place it precisely in the focus of the paraboloid, and in this manner, we will be able to obtain a projector for our needs. And if I rotate the projector, directing it towards the screen located behind me, we will observe that the beam of light produced is not highly parallel due to the fact that our source was not point-like in nature. And a source that is closer to a point source can be obtained from an LED flashlight by removing the lens that is used to output its light. At this moment, I will carefully position this flashlight into the precise focus of the mirror and successfully obtain a bundle of parallel rays, or rays that are extremely close to being parallel, shining directly at you without any deviation in their path. Now I will perform another experiment. I will rotate the mirror towards the screen and position it in a way that I will not receive a beam of light, but instead I will focus and concentrate the image on the screen using the mirror. And now, Alexei will provide an explanation about the process of image formation in a concave mirror. Constructing an image in a concave mirror is very similar to constructing an image in a converging lens, and we have a corresponding video that we highly recommend you watch. In the first experiment, I'll place the pencil next to the mirror. In the mirror, the reflection is about the same size as the pencil itself, and now I'll start moving the pencil away from the mirror. The picture moves in the opposite direction and simultaneously increases in size. Explain experiment on diagram. We'll draw convenient rays. First ray from object parallel to mirror's axis. After reflection, it passes through the focus point. The second ray goes from the object to the optical center of the mirror and reflects at the same angle to the optical axis. Reflected rays do not intersect, but their extensions intersect at a single point behind the mirror surface. At this point is where the image of the object is located, and we see that it is larger than the object itself. Now, we will relocate the object within the GeoGebra program and monitor its image as it moves. When we move the object away from the mirror, its virtual image also moves away from the mirror and increases in size. The object moves closer to the focus and the image appears to move further away, approaching infinity. What happens next? The object passes through the focus point and an inverted image appears on the opposite side. This image is authentic because it is formed by the rays themselves, not by elongations or extensions of the rays. Let's carry out a corresponding experiment. I shift the object away from the mirror and a flipped image emerges in it. We believe that this image is located behind the mirror but in actuality it is situated in front of the mirror. And I will demonstrate it at this moment. And to do so I will require a light source. A concave mirror is placed on the optical bench for this purpose. And this screen, which occupies only 50% of the window, 
in order to allow the rays of light from the source to reach the mirror, and I additionally place it on the optical bench. I move the screen in order to obtain a sharp image of the source, and we observe that it truly is located in front of the mirror. So, what are concave mirrors utilized for? Well, this is a mirror with a long focal length, specifically used for cosmetics, and it is necessary in order to inspect and analyze its imaginary and magnified image in all its intricate details and specific characteristics. Well, besides cosmetic purposes, we also have cosmic ones, and of course the main application of concave mirrors is in reflector telescopes, but that's worth discussing in a separate video. And concerning convex mirrors, Andre will now proceed to inform you and provide all the necessary details and explanations about them. I will start with a very simple experiment involving the reflection of a bundle of parallel rays from a convex mirror. It can be seen that after reflection, the rays themselves diverge, but their extensions converge at one point behind the mirror, and this point is called the focus of a convex mirror. Now I will construct the image of the object in a convex mirror using the same convenient ray method. I'll aim the first ray at the focus, and after reflecting, it'll travel parallel to the optical axis. I'll direct the second convenient ray to the mirror's optical center, and it'll reflect at the same angle to the optical axis. Reflected rays diverge, but their extensions intersect behind the mirror, determining the position of the image. The image appears virtual, upright, and smaller in size compared to the object, as it is diminished due to the reflection process. Let's reproduce this construction in practice. And here we see how the image moves away into the distance and becomes smaller and smaller. Let's observe this change in the image in the GeoGebra program. As the object moves farther away from the convex mirror, its image approaches the focus and becomes progressively smaller and smaller. And now it is the time to move on to our traditional final question. And here it is, the question we always end with. Convex mirrors are usually used as panoramic mirrors on roads. The rear view mirror in a car is also typically convex. And the question arises, what makes a convex mirror more convenient than a regular flat one, since it seems more difficult to manufacture? Please write your thoughts on this in the comments section of our video on YouTube.